Welcome to Excel Academy's video. In this video, we are going to discuss the amendment related to charges. In Companies Act 2013, we have section 77 to 87, which talks about charges. On 7th of April 2017, the rules related to charges has undergone an amendment. So, the 7th April 2017, the amendment has come, which says the company's registration of charges amendment rules 2017. In this rules, mainly we talk about the form CHG1. The form for registration of a charge is CHG1. In CHG1, they have got certain amendments and now we have to understand why. Primarily the reason for this amendment is many companies used to escape and not comply with the charges related disclosures. When the disclosures are not given properly, the government authorities or the MCA does not have information about whether it is a real charge or it is a fictitious one. There are many instances where the companies going hand in glove with the banks have created charges on fictitious assets, lands and buildings which were not even there. They have taken crores of rupees and there are many cases like this, even some landmark and famous cases and that is the reason why the Ministry of Corporate Affairs have come up with this provision where in the amendment there are more and more disclosures to be given relating to the particulars of the property. So the short particulars of the property in form CHG1 is related to the first thing, the plot or the dwelling. That means where is the plot or whether it is a dwelling, that is a building, that has to be disclosed in the particulars. The second thing is the evaluated price of the asset. That means whatever is the price after evaluation has to be mentioned in the form CHG1. This was not there earlier. This is part of the amendment rules. So the act has not been amended. Only the rules has been amended with respect to the CHG1. Then next thing is they are going and asking for more and more disclosures and more and more details where the company cannot really escape and they have to give all the disclosures. They cannot take the risk of giving a fictitious asset. That is the plot ID and the nature of the property has to be disclosed in CNG1. Next, they go further and they ask for the survey number or if it is a building, the gate number where the property is located. So as you can observe, after each one of these disclosures which they are asking, it is very clear that the government does not want to have any companies which will show fictitious assets or fictitious land building and then take huge crores of rupees from the banks to avoid this, this disclosure ask. If you see the next point, it is very interesting. You should go back to a little bit of geography. In school, we all studied geography. In that, we studied latitude and longitudes. So in Form CHG1, they are even asking the exact location of the property by disclosure of the latitude and longitude where the property is situated. So in this way, there is no way the company can escape. Once they tell the latitude and longitude, it can be only one place and there is only one world and one earth. So it cannot be any other place. So it is very easy for the government to track even if they want to go and inspect. Then the next disclosure is relating to area of the plot, that is how many square meters, etc. Then they even ask the next disclosure relating to what are the property surrounded by. So we call it as bounded by, that is for the north, south, east, west of the property, what are the other uh, location of property, whether it is a building, whether it is a road, whether it is an open plot, that has to be disclosed in the form CHG1. And then all the disclosures which we discussed now, the seven points, has to be as per the revenue records or the municipal records or the gram panchayat records if it is in a village area the property. So again I am telling as we can understand the disclosure requirements are much much higher under the new form CHG1 by way of the company's amendment uh, rules relating to the charges. If you go further the description of the document by which the company got the title this was not there earlier. They are even asking how did the company acquire that title to that particular property. That has to be disclosed in CHG1. Over there they go to further details things like the number of title documents which are deposited with the bank or financial institution where you are taking the charge and creating a charge. That has to be disclosed. And there further they have a table in CHG1 where they ask for the document type. 
the document number, the sub-register of is which taluk or district that particular property is situated. So when we see all this, it is very clear that the company's amendment rules related to charges asks for more and more disclosures and this is the reason why you have to remember all these points and if you quote this in your exam, definitely your answer will have much more value than the person who has not written this amendment. To get more awesome videos on the company secretary course and the subjects in the company secretary course, please subscribe to our channel Excel Academy. If you click on the bell icon, each time you will get the notification of the every new video which we upload.